The Jack Benny Program, presented by America's largest selling cigarette, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike, first again with tobacco men. More independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. A recent impartial survey reveals this overwhelming smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco, the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. These are the independent tobacco experts, the top men in their field, who year after year can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. And remember, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, these experts choose Lucky Strike. So let this personal smoking preference of the experts lead you to Lucky Strike. Light up a Lucky, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means a world of smoking enjoyment for you. Yes, you'll like Lucky Strike. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the sportsman, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. At the moment, Rochester is alone straightening up Jack's room. Well, I've put away almost everything the boss brought home from Europe. Hmm, what's this? Oh, these are some of the souvenirs Mr. Benny brought back. A beret from France, wooden shoes from Holland, and a barnacle off the Queen Mary. <laughs> he must have got that when he was diving for coins. <laughs> Say, what's this little book? Let's see. Oh, it's Mr. Benny's diary of his trip. I think I'll take a little peek. No. <laughs> Emily Post says it isn't right to read other people's personal notes. But Emily ain't here, so peekaboo. <laughs> ah, here's the first entry in the diary. It says... July 10th, dear diary. We arrived in London today. It thrills me to be in this historical old city with all its picturesque scenery. I was lucky to get a room overlooking the beautiful Hotel Savoy. <laughs> which is much better than paying Savoy prices and overlooking the dump I'm living in. <laughs> That's my boss. July 20th, Dear Diary. Last night, we opened at London's famous Palladium Theater. What an event. It was the most exciting thing that has happened to me in all my 39 years. <laughs> the theater was jammed with important people. Everybody was there except the king and queen. Poor things, they couldn't get tickets. <laughs> oh, diary, come now. <laughs> August 10th, dear diary. Yesterday we arrived in Paris. Well, now we're getting someplace. <laughs> Paris is a very gay city. Last night the whole gang went to the Kit Kat Club, the Casino de Paris, and the Follies Bergere. But I didn't join them. I visited the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and the Louvre Museum. Mmm, 39, he says. <laughs> August 17th, dear diary. Yesterday was my last night in Paris, and what a time I had. I met a cute little French dancer, and we went to all the gay spots. We finally wound up in a tiny candlelit cafe, and I toasted her by drinking champagne out of her slipper. It was very romantic till I choked on Dr. Scholl's foot pad. <laughs> Ah, what sweet memories I have of little Suzette. Every time I think of her, a lump comes to my throat. Mmm, <laughs> Suzette. Well, this is pretty interesting. 
But I better get downstairs and dust the library. The boss and his gang are going to listen to the World Series. Hope I get a chance to hear it. It should be exciting. Boston Braves versus Satchel Paige. <laughs> yeah, I better hurry. Now, come on, Polly. Try it again. Say, bonsoir, monsieur. <laughs> Polly. What's the matter, boss? Oh, I've been trying to teach Polly French, but it's no use. Rochester, arrange the chairs around the radio. You know, my gang will be here. <laughs> Mind myself from Armitage, Polly Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Polly's older than I thought. <laughs> been around, too. <laughs> Now, arrange the chairs, Rochester. I will. Say, boss, I finished putting away all your souvenirs from your trip. You really had a great time in Europe, didn't you? Yes, it was wonderful, except for that one thing that marred the end of the trip. Something followed me back from Europe. What was it, boss? What was it? An echo. Oh, for a minute I thought it was Suzette. <laughs> no, no, Rochester, it was a crazy echo. See, it started in Switzerland when I heard the Swiss yodelers, and it followed me ever... Hey, wait a minute. How did you know about Suzette? You read my diary, didn't you? Well, boss, I just... Now, wait a minute, Rochester. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A diary is a personal thing, and you shouldn't have read it. Where did you find it? In your folio. In my folio? Folio, lady. (laughs) There it is, Rochester. Did you hear? Did you hear that echo? I didn't hear anything. But you must have. Listen. Hello... You, you heard it that time, didn't you? No, sir, I didn't hear a thing. But you must have. It was a definite echo. Try it now. You, try it and you'll see. Now you yell hello. Okay. Hello! Hello. How? <laughs> Polly, you keep out of this or I'll give you a good spanking. You better not, boss. The last time you spanked us, you laid a cracked egg. Oh, yeah, we had to eat it right away. (laughs) Now, Rochester, the gang will be over pretty soon, so place the chairs around the radio. Yes, sir. There's a phone. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, this is Jack Benny. No, no, no. My program goes on at 5 o'clock, California daylight time. No, 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 no. That's 7 o'clock in the east. Well, certainly I'm sure. I did my program at 5 o'clock last week. Yes, yes, I'm positive. You're welcome. Who was that, boss? NBC. They're mixed up, too. (laughs) (laughs) These these different times are so confusing. That that must be some of the gang coming over to hear the World Series. I'll get get the door. Everyone knows I'm a rambling rose. I'm a beauty growing wild. (laughs) Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Rosie. Oh you, oh, you heard me singing. Come on in. You know, Dennis, you're the first one to arrive. I wanted to get here before the prices change. <laughs> Dennis, I only do that for the Rose Bowl game. Now, come on. Come on in the den and we'll... Hey, wait a minute. Dennis, this is the first time I've ever seen you wearing glasses. Are your eyes bad? No. Why are, you, why are you wearing those glasses? My uncle died and left them to me. <laughs> Your uncle? Oh, that's... That's... That's a shame. Yeah, I can't see a darn thing with them. Well, for heaven's sake, kid, if you can't see with them, take them off. Just because somebody leaves you something in a will, you're not compelled to use it. I'm not? No. You want to buy a set of teeth? <laughs> now cut that out! And stop making things up. Look, I just happen to remember this morning I saw your uncle walking down the street. That was my aunt. He left her his clothes. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Now, look, kid, you don't need those glasses, so take them off. Okay. But I'm glad you came over early because I want you to run through the song you're going to do on the program. What are you going to sing? Hair of gold, eyes of blue. That's a cute number. Go ahead. <laughs> I came down from Butte, Montana For a little change of scene And I stopped a day in Santa Fe 
where I met a pretty queen. Oh, hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm gonna make her mine. Oh, I planned to leave on Monday, but she held me kinda tight. So I held the ground and hung around, and I left on Friday night. Oh, hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. <laughs> Prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm gonna make her mine. I was kind of blue and lonely, so I took my horse and pack. And on Sunday morn was up and gone, heading south and riding back. Oh, hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm gonna make her mine. Oh, hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. <laughs> The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm gonna make Dennis, Dennis, that's a nice song. You, you know, you always seem to pick good ones for the program. Thanks. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you something. Uh, do you still hear that echo that bothered you last week? Yes, Dennis, once in a while. It's got me worried, too. I can't figure out what it is. Well, it could be a figment of your imagination. Huh? Or it might be a hallucination brought on by overexertion of the subconscious mind, which can be attributed to a neurotic psychosis. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, what does that mean? I don't know. It was on the card I got when I weighed myself this morning. <laughs> Well, look at the gang ought to be here pretty soon. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. Uh, get some refreshments ready. Yes, sir. Are we going to push the hot dogs or the penis today? We're not going to push anything. They'll look, they'll see. If they like, they'll buy. <laughs> just, just, uh, just get them ready. Okay, will you let me know when Satchel Page is pitching? Yes, yes, I'll let you know. Well, I guess they're here. Go on the den and sit down, kid. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. I've got the eyes, I've got the lips, I wish the hair was mine. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hiya, Don. Hello, Jack. Hi, Jack. Don, where's your car? Well, I left it at Mary's house and we walked over. Well, I don't blame you. It's such a sunny day. Not when you're walking with Don. <laughs> I see what you mean. Come on in. The game hasn't started yet. Oh, by the way, Jack, I want to thank you for that nice present you brought me from England. Oh, what did he bring you, Don? A genuine cowhide belt, but I feel a little guilty when I wear it. <laughs> guilty now? Why? Well, I hate to think that two cows had to die so I could hold up my pants. <laughs> All right, Don, all right. <laughs> Don. Don, you, do, you don't have to shake like that. We haven't, been, we haven't been sponsored by them for seven years. Now, come on. Let's go in the, let's go in the den and sit down. Okay. Well, look who's here. Hello, Dennis. Who's that? Dennis, take off those glasses. <laughs> Okay. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Dennis, I didn't know you wore glasses. Are your eyes bad? Don't answer them, kid. I wouldn't go through that again for a million dollars. Now, look, now, let's, let's get ready to hear the game, huh? Say, Jack, on the way over here, I was telling Don all about our trip to Europe, and he got such a big kick out of it. I sure did, Jack. How was London? Did you have a good time there, too? Did I? Don, I went everywhere. Waterloo Bridge, Piccadilly Circus, Westminster Abbey, all the places you read about. Did you go to Buckingham Palace to see the changing of the guard? Well, uh, not exactly. Uh, Jack went to the Bank of England to see the guarding of the change. <laughs> say, Mary, that was a pretty good gag. You know, you ought to save that. For the program? No, just save it. 
<laughs> now, look, as soon as Phil gets here... We'll... Oh, boss! Yes? Is Satchel Page pitching yet? The game doesn't start for 10 minutes. Oh! Gee, come to, come to think of it, you know, I don't even know who is going to pitch. I bet it won't be my uncle. Dennis, now be quiet. Say, kids, I'll bet Bob Hope's the most excited person in Hollywood on account of the World Series. Why? Well, Bob owns the Cleveland Indians. So what? Jack owns Cleveland. <laughs> Owns Cleveland, owns Cleveland. A few square miles, she makes a big thing out of it. <laughs> well, it's almost time for the game. Jack, wasn't that an exciting finish in the American League this year? It certainly was. And yet, you know, when I had lunch with Leo DeRocha in New York this summer, he told me he thought the National League was going to be in a tight race, too. But, Jack, anyone could see that the Boston Braves were running away with a pennant. That's exactly what I told Leo. Told Leo Lee. <laughs> There it goes again, that echo. Now, don't tell me you didn't hear it. You heard it, didn't you, Don? I didn't hear a thing, Jack. Neither did I. Did you hear it, Dennis? No, but don't go by me. I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> well, I told you to take them off. This echo is driving me crazy. If it doesn't stop, I'll, I'll do something desperate. Oh, don't get so excited, Jack. Supposing you do hear an echo. What's so terrible about that? Plenty. Someday I may sit down and hear Fred Allen's program twice. <laughs> Just think of that. Rochester, there's the buzzer. Is Satchel Page pitching yet? No. Then I'll answer the door. Mm. Jack, uh, who do you really think will win the series? Well, Don, it's my belief that Cleveland has a decided edge in pitchers, but Boston seems stronger in fielding. Now, while they're evenly matched in batting power, Cleveland seems to rate this psychological advantage. Therefore, I pick Cleveland. And, Don, I base this conclusion on my complete knowledge of sports. Mm -hmm. Some knowledge of sports. What? You think Gorgeous George plays a violin with Phil Spitalny? I do not. I found out last Hiya, week... Hi, Jackson Dante. Hello, Livy. You want touch of Venus, you. Hello. Hello, Dennis. <laughs> Hello, Alice. Dennis, give me those glasses! <laughs> What a kid. What about the game? Jackson started yet? No, and there's no sense listening. It's all settled. Grantland Benny picks Cleveland to win. Yes, and they will win, too. What are you talking about? Cleveland ain't got a chance. Oh, they haven't, eh? Would you like to bet a hundred bucks? Yes. Well, call up Bob Hope. He's taking all he can get. <laughs> Come on, put up or shut up. Wise guy. Never mind about hope. I'll bet you a buck. I just want to win one of your dollars. One of my dollars? Why? I want to see what Washington looked like when he was a boy. <laughs> oh, fine. Phil, you don't even know who George Washington was. I do, too. George Washington was the father of our country. Well. He was first in war, first in peace, and first again with tobacco men. <laughs> Phil, who told you that? I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little fat commercial. Oh. Well, very good, Don, but I didn't know they had cigarettes in those days. Well, sure, Jack. When Washington threw that dollar across Potomac, they threw back a packet of Luckies and 83 cents change. <laughs> no. Huh? Yes, but they didn't have any matches then, so they threw him a Boy Scout and two sticks. <laughs> Gee, Mary, I always thought... Come on, Jack, look what time it is. Are we going to listen to the game or not? Oh, yeah. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. Before you turn on the radio, I want to tell you the most amazing thing you ever heard. What is it, Phil? Last week, I saw a ball game. There were 16 home runs and not a single man scored. Wait a minute, Phil. 16 home runs and not a single man scored? How was that? They were all married. <laughs> oh, Harris, you've got so much more than Spike Jones. Why should you fight it? <laughs> Phil, Phil, tell me something. What? Which one of your heads has the Tony? <laughs> now, let's get settled down and we... Say, we'll... boss, is Satchel Page pitching yet? Rochester, the game hasn't started. Well, the order broadcast is warm-up. I'll let you know when it's time. <laughs> Mademoiselle from Armitage, Parley <laughs> Darn that bird. I told you to keep quiet. Who are you? Polly, take off my glasses. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Hey, Jackson, come on. Turn on the radio. Yeah, let's hear the game. Okay, okay. Folks, do you have a friend or relative who drinks too much? 
Well, just remember that alcoholism is a disease that can be cured by... That's not the station. Don't turn it off, Jackson. I want to tell Frankie about this. (laughs) Never mind, Frankie. Oh, come on, Jack. Find the station or we'll miss the game. All right. And here we are in the bottom half of the third inning in what promises to be an exciting ball game. Gee, it started already. What a crowd. The stadium is jammed with important people from all over the world. Everybody's here except the king and queen of England. Poor things, they couldn't get tickets. (laughs) Gee, they miss everything, don't they? There's one out, bases are loaded, Keltner's on first, Mitchell on second, and Kennedy and Greenberg are on third. He won't get off for anybody, that guy. As you know, Bearden is pitching for the Indians and Bickford for the Braves. Bickford's taking his time and he's plenty worried. I don't blame him. Boss? What? Page? No. Oh! I wish he'd listen on his own radio Pickford the pitcher is winding up Remember folks, one out, Boudreaux at bat And the bases are lonely but loaded Gosh, the, the pitcher's really in a hole Holy ole <laughs> Holy smokes, there it goes again, that echo You heard it this time, didn't you, Mary? I didn't hear a thing Neither did I Neither did I I didn't hear it either <laughs> what? Boudreau is still at bat and here comes the pitch It may be a hit McCormick feels the ball and throws it to home where it's a close decision He's out No, he's safe No, he's out No, he's safe He's out He's safe And here's the official decision He's half safe <laughs> Now Robinson is coming up to bat. Here's an interesting sidelight on Robinson. At the opening of the game, he was five feet, two inches tall. Now in the fourth inning, he's six feet, three inches tall. What? Everybody here is wondering how Robinson grew so. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Nelson, you may not be from Boston, but you certainly use your bean. (laughs) Jack. Jack, are you sure you got the right station? Certainly. Robinson is waiting for the pitch, and here it comes. It's a hit. It's a long, long fly. The ball is going out toward right field. It's still going. It's going, going, going. And now, ladies and gentlemen, while the ball is in the air, the Cleveland Indians will serenade the Braves. Send us here with a cheer. He say Boston Brave soon be losing his scalp. Feller, beard, and two. Robinson, Satchel, Page. They are in a rage. Boston's gonna need help. But Boston show today they can play ball. Just like Lucky Strike, they're the best and everyone likes them. They're so round and firm, fully packed. That's a fact. Indian chiefs who know agree. L-S-M-F-T, F-T, F-T, F-T. A product is essential to continuing success. Oh! That was the Cleveland Indians serenading the Boston Braves. Now back to the game. The ball is still in the air! What a long play! <laughs> It's still going, going. There it goes over the right field fence and out of the Cleveland Stadium. It's still going. Gee, kids, that's about the longest. <laughs> Jack, your window. Say, that was a hit. <laughs> Robinson is being congratulated by his teammates as he crosses home plate. As you know, Robinson is an outstanding player and came up from the minor leagues where he used to play shortstop for Doo-Wah Diddy. Doo-Wah Diddy? Why, that ain't no town and it ain't no city. No, but it's awful small and awful pretty. Doo-Wah Diddy. What's going on here, anyway? Hey, boss, boss! 
Captain Satchel Page pitching a terrific game. Satchel Page, he isn't pitching. He is on my radio. <laughs> You know, kids, I can't figure out... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who may have tuned in late, this ball game in Cleveland is in the third inning. In New York, it's the fifth inning. And in Nevada and California, it's the second inning. What? Except in Washington and Oregon, where the broadcast was called off on account of rain. (laughs) What is this, anyway? While we're waiting for the next batter, I'd like to mention a few celebrities who are here today. Right below me are Mr. and Mrs. Gary Cooper. To the left of them are Mr. and Mrs. William Powell. And below them are Mr. and Mrs. and Mrs. and Mrs. and Mrs. and Mrs. Mrs. Artie Shaw. (laughs) Well, what if the king and queen couldn't get in? (laughs) And now it's the last half of the ninth inning. Two out and Dobie is up to bat. The last half of the ninth already? He's crazy. Here comes the pitch. It's a hard-hit ball going out between second and third base. It's a hot grounder, and Dennis Day's uncle is under it. (laughs) Dennis Day's uncle? Dobie is out, and the game is over. But we'll not know who won until the final returns come in from New York, California, Washington, and Oregon. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, the foregoing was a paid political broadcast and does not necessarily express an opinion. Mary, turn off that radio. Okay. Now, kids... And now, folks, I'd like to tell you how thrilled I've been... Wait a minute! Who turned on that radio again? I did! Oh, no! (laughs) Come on, kids, let's go in the kitchen and buy some sandwiches. Ladies and gentlemen, during the last war, the chief hope of our enemies was to divide the United States along racial and religious lines and thereby conquer us. Let's not spread prejudice. A divided America is a weak America, and we need the same harmony among our various racial and religious groups that was the source of our strength in war. Through our behavior, we encourage the respect of our children and make them better neighbors to all races and religions. Remind them that being good neighbors has helped make our country great and kept her free. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... At 62, American. A recent impartial survey covering all the southern tobacco markets shows Lucky Strike. First again with tobacco men. Yes, more independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Excuse me, but who are these tobacco experts? They're the independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, men with years of experience buying, selling, and handling tobacco. And it's important for you to know that more of these independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. That's what the survey shows. Now, listen to what Mr. Edwin Lee Moore, veteran independent tobacco buyer from Greenville, North Carolina, recently said. At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, light, mellow leaf. Quality tobacco that just can't be beat for smoking enjoyment. I've smoked Luckies for 22 years. A Lucky Strike smoker for 22 years. And remember, Mr. Moore, like you, looks to the cigarette he smokes for enjoyment. Real deep down smoking enjoyment. So light up a Lucky yourself, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco gives you real deep-down smoking enjoyment from every Lucky you light. Yes, puff by puff, pack by pack. You'll like Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, due to unforeseen commitments, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman couldn't be with us tonight, but they'll visit us in a couple of weeks. Be sure and stay tuned in for the Phil Harris Alice Faye show, which follows immediately. And on Saturday night, listen to A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Daily old lady. <laughs> there it goes again. Oh, well, good night. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.